Hello and welcome back to the channel folks, Heir of Hashoot here, and I am glad to be continuing our Chaos Dwarves campaign. You know what, I have a bunch of great comments from you all, and we're going to cover some of those from the last episode because you all finally got a chance to play the DLC it released, and I asked you what you thought, and we got some feedback from folks, and I feel like it'll be fun to share that, um, because I think I mentioned on the last one that I don't do a whole lot of... Um, reviewing of things like occasionally i'll do it but i don't do it very much because obviously it, it a lot of like there there are certainly times when games can be objectively reviewed and be found to be bad for instance we're probably about to get raided by the green skins here and it's got several turns before i can do anything about it um yeah obviously sometimes things can be objectively bad and that's fine and it's good for people to call it out where it is like games have released pretty broken or missing a bunch of features, all that kind of stuff. Um, however, a lot of times I feel like reviews are a more subjective thing anyway, and so I, I gave you all some thoughts on it. I said, I'm having fun with it. <clears throat> I'm enjoying it. I explained why, yes, I would have purchased the DLC, uh, but it's because I purchase all the stuff. So again, I'm not like a, a super discerning <laughs> buyer, you know, where it's like I'm extremely stingy. So I think all of those things are important. Um, to have that kind of perspective. Dang it, we're going to sit here and get ripped up while this is happening. Uh, military access, um, I guess. So, we're not very high power. I wish we didn't have to do all this recruiting via global, but there's just not a tower that we're able to get up here in the mountains very easily. There are some to the north of us. Um, we'll invest in the safety equipment. I guess we got a lot of extra stuff right now. Alright, we're three turns because we picked up an additional... Um, an additional global recruitment thing on that turn in because of our research so uh, in three turns we'll be able to push back against the green skins and our army will be stronger than ever um we've got that infernal ire sworn uh we are going to name one of our at least one or, or say these are the artillery i still need to get a um what do you call it an iron demon we're going to name it thomas the chaos engine that was requested by people and then uh, I got a request, too, to name one of the Blunderbuss units, uh, the Blunder Boys. Uh, there was another name to it, I forgot, but I know that the Blunder Boys. You guys make sure and continue to give me suggestions. Someone suggested if we get a, a great Taurus, we name it Red Bull, but we haven't named this one anything else, so we'll call this one. Will it fit? There we go. Um, don't sue me, Red Bull. All right, so we've got that done, and... We are ready to continue. Yeah, so Grimgore's faction came back and took that spot. Um, they've got Karak Krakaton down here as well. Um, I'm hoping that the enemies can maybe keep them at bay, so we'll see. Um, we're still working on getting rid of Grimgore. I've only got the one army at the moment. We do have a lot of cash, but it's also because I'm not paying upkeep on some of these units at the moment while we're recruiting. We could upgrade to a top-tier building, which would be really cool. But our capital needs to be upgraded first. And we'll just continue to throw some upgrades. We're still at 100% output here, which is good news. Um, you all saw me take that new tower seat uh, over there in the last turn or two. We've got a lot of armaments. It'd be neat if more buildings required armaments. Some of the military chain buildings do, but we have all these armaments. Oh, we need to get a new convoy ready, too. We're still waiting on uh, this guy to, to get done. Uh, let's add this guy and pick a convoy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep grabbing labor. Uh, labor is something that you just can't get enough of. Uh, again, when you're playing your campaign, go crazy, you know? Grab whatever you want. Um can get as much or as little as you want. It's only going to take four turns. I'll get 671 labor. Dispatch. Okay. So it's not a ton of labor, but we'll get some. Um, let's go out of here. And let's see, I've got my agent headed back up here to where we can... Make a hobgoblin army. I cannot believe the Gormandy tribe has managed to hold on despite their wars. They're not holding on by much, though. It looks like Clan Ferrex kind of getting out of control over here. So we may have to get a hobgoblin army and, and go push against Clan Ferrex. I'm, I'm assuming, unless Clan Ferrex goes absolutely bananas, um, that a hobgoblin army will be enough. All right, let's get to some of your comments while we're training these troops and we can't do a whole lot anywhere. 
Um, for the the real baddie says, I'm on turn 37 of my Drasoth campaign. So far, I've realized he's very strong. Uh, probably some power creep. He says he beat Emric by turn 10, Tratch by 30, wiped out some ogres. And a lot of people agreed with him um, that, you know, they feel like that uh, some of these Chaos Dwarf Lords are, I don't know why you're ending an unaggression pact, but sure, um, are pretty powerful. And I think they are. Um, is it power creep? Uh, time will tell. Uh, and honestly, power creep um, to me doesn't matter as much in single player. It matters more in multiplayer. And so it, it kind of just, ooh, dang, we can add a black dragon? Heck yes. All right, um, we've got a dragon into our convoy army, so that is absolutely awesome. Um, so yeah, is there some power creep? I mean, there, there can be, again. To me, it doesn't matter much in single player. It definitely matters. Is he headed down? He is. He's headed down into our land because we don't have an army to stop him. And settlements are pretty lightly defended, honestly, um, for like the factory settlements and stuff. This is going to be annoying. Now the greenskins are going to get down in our land and cause a whole bunch of trouble. Um, I actually... Let's... Can we recruit a... Let's recruit a lord here. Uh, we can get Lord of Hashut, Sorcerer, Prophet, or we can get an Overseer. Um, what would be a good one around this? Lord of Fire is pretty good. Death is pretty good. Uh, let's grab a Sorcerer, Prophet. And then I'm going to... I'm gonna train up a few troops. I gave our boys here. We don't have a hobgoblin recruiting building here. Dang it, that sucks. Um, we do have. We don't have access to Kadai, but we could grab. Let's grab a. Oh, there's allied recruitment too. In the Gormandy tribe, we've got 68 favor with them. We could convert to something useful. Ice Wolf Chariots. I don't think those are going to be particularly helpful. Um, honestly, these Skin Wolves could be really good. Going to cost us some upkeep, though. And these Marauders. Let's just throw a couple units in there. Um, that'll help us put together something a little more varied. And then let's grab some Gobbo units here, because we just want something cheap that we don't have to pay a lot of upkeep on. We're just trying to make an army to dissuade the greenskins from just going completely bananas across my land. Outpost available, upgrades. Okay, I'm not worried about upgrades or outpost. Um, at the moment, and so let's get to some more of the comments. Um, let's see, uh, Ian says, first DLC of the trilogy that I cannot afford. Um, so obviously he's disappointed in the cost of it, so I figured many people would be. Like I said, I explained the cost from my perspective, but not everybody's perspective is mine. So thank you, Ian, for sharing that. Um, it says, and he also says, thanks for the content. It says it helps make the time at work go by faster. Well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, A.H. or A. Heckman says, I've picked up the Chorfs and I've been enjoying them. Played a couple of turns into a Zadon campaign where I smashed into the Great Bastion uh, with Village. Feels great so far. I love their economy. Um, I actually had another comment. I'll have to see if I can find it where someone was saying they don't like the economy because they feel like it's like a, um, a whole lot to manage or like a constant balancing game that they don't find particularly fun. Okay, good. The green skin's turned away. So, see, just even having that little bit of an army there is enough to sometimes make them rethink things. And that's exactly what happened there. So that's perfect. We do need... How far are we? There is a Regiment of Renown. Um, Iron Demon, I think. Demon's Ton, Dreadwig, Mortar, yeah. Um, it doesn't come to level 30, though. And there's a Bull Centaur render that comes at 25, and we're at 23. So we'll leave a slot open, because our army's going to be pretty strong as it is. And we'll just try and um, get a couple more skill points and make our way through there. Our Gabo units should get some decent um, increases here over the base value. 
doesn't look that good still so far, but they should be getting something good from Gorda's. So they should have an extra 9 melee attack. Wow, their melee attack must have been really bad. Um, extra ammunition and missile strength. And then dodge him is giving them defense. Wow. I forget just how bad the stats are in these guys. <laughs> oh well, it's still better than nothing, so we'll take it. Um, because again, they're supposed to just be more of a dissuade the enemy from attacking me. We're about to lose a bunch of gold, by the way, in the... Um, as soon as we get done with this recruitment. Um, it would be cool to be able to get access to Kadai Fireborn. They are really good against infantry. Uh, but I'm not going to get too worried about them at the moment. We've got that going for us. There's increased artillery. Does that take armaments? It does. We've got a lot of armaments right now, so let's go ahead and run that upgrade. This one does not take armaments. And then... It's in the wrong settlement, but we'll go ahead and build that up in case we need to get more Gabo units. Okay, let's end another turn. And I'll see if I can find just a couple more comments. Again, I said I'd go through these comments while I was kind of recruiting those units. Um, that way, you know, we're not really missing anything else. Um, Andrew says, quick question. How do you hide your lord or hero names on the campaign map? Is it in a settings or a mod? Well, I'm not using any mods to do it, so it must be in the settings. Um, usually the space bar is where you're going to want to push. And there's like hide army flags, parchment overlays, floating character names. Um, so stuff like that is probably where you're going to do it. So hold the space bar down and then check out that menu over there because I think that's going to be what you're looking for. So the convoy encountered rats in a tunnel. And um, we can avoid them and keep moving or we can fight the battle and reduce the journey time. The Skaven are going to have Death Globe Bombardiers. They're going to have Death Runners and Clan Rats and a Help Hit Abomination. Now, we should be equipped to take them down. Um, it's going to be a tough fight. Dang, it's a Grace here, so he's going to have Warp Lightning. Warp Lightning is the absolute worst. Um, I'm just going to avoid them for now. I don't want the Warp Lightning. Honestly, nothing else in that Skaven army bothers me, but... Warp Lightning is just like a guarantee that like at least three or four of your units are going to go all the way down to half health. Because the AI just cast it over and over and over and over again, and you just can't stop it. Alright, this Greenskin army over here needs to be confronted. Uh, I'm going to go take Firemouth and then hopefully confront that army. They'll probably avoid me though, because that's what the AI likes to do. I don't want to recruit anything else into this army at the moment, because we're probably not even going to be using it very much. Um, so it's, again, it's just more of a dissuade anybody from walking into my territory type of army. Uh, let's go ahead and, it's not much income, but it's a little bit of income. Let's take it. And then let's go ahead and end another turn. How much, we have a, quite a bit of conclave influence again. Maximum cargo size, construction time reduction for all buildings. That would be nice because they take quite a long time. We're getting a lot of seats here and the other clans are not. Um, so we're going to have a lot of power if they can't contest us any better, and we're, you're getting a fair bit of Conclave influence every turn as well. Outpost available, I'm not worried about the outpost. Okay, let's end this turn again. By destroying Firemouth and hopefully killing that other army, we might make rank 25 too, which would give us that other um, Regiment of Renown, and then five more levels, and we can unlock the, the Iron Demon that has the Dreadquake Mortar with it. Oh good, the Greenskins garrisons. This is perfect. We can just kill them all in one fell swoop here. They were running away from Kolek, no doubt. Um, so Kolek here has been kind of helpful in helping me to kill the uh, Greenskins. One of my towers got plague. That's not surprising. There's Skaven and other units around. I think this is the Skaven over here to our south and west. We'll have to get rid of them eventually as well. All right, Greenskins are in a forced march, though, which means that they should enter the battle um, very tired. Uh, they do have a pretty substantial force, but it is predicting them to lose, which I agree with said prediction. Um, I do also think that they're going to lose. Put these banners on here. Okay, um, let's go ahead and fight this one. Is it a... let's look at the settlement. Yeah, okay, it's just open field. Battle's underway. Uh, the Greenskins are going to camp on their side of the map. Um, 
CA really needs to reprogram this behavior. Like, I understand that I attacked and, that, you know, if the time runs out, I lose, but the AI can just make a very quick and simple formulation like, oh, we don't have artillery, we better start running because sitting back is going to do nothing, absolutely nothing, except make them lose the battle easier. Um, so, yeah, I do hope that that's something eventually that CA will address. Um, I just need to move up a little bit to get my magma cannons into range, so I think, honestly, I'm just going to pick slightly better position like over here on this hill um so let's take our infantry for instance and if i line them up just on that rock there and then i can put my blunderbusses i just need to make sure their line of sight doesn't get corrupted it is going to right there let's let's put them right there and then let's actually use that rock and let's put our infantry right behind it but maybe split them a little like this so yeah, we'll split some this direction, and then we'll split some this direction. And then I'll have both centaurs to hold the flanks. And then I'll keep my wolf riders and our red bull here. And then if I put these cannons here, I'll probably have the range to hit that flank. And then we'll just put Astrogoth over here. And then I'll kind of keep my Taruk right in the middle, and I can swing him to whichever flank he needs to support. So all of our units are moving. I just need to put my cannons into a defensive. I've already done that with my blunderbuss. For those who don't understand it, uh, the defensive formation is really good for missiles when you don't want them to pursue an enemy if it routes or moves out of range. So that's what the defensive stance is good for. The time when you would want to use it for infantry is whenever you want your infantry to hold a line and stay in a single position. Like, don't, don't move, hold this position. So that's the defensive stance. Uh, you can get down here, you can toggle it by just pushing the hotkey H if you wish to as well. Alright, let's go ahead and fast forward, get our cannons. I think they'll be just inside a range, and if not, very close to range. But notice that I'm picking my position carefully. I wanted my, my blunderbusses up on this little hill to get better line of sight for their maximum range. If I had stuck them down in this little trench here, it would have minimized their range. So do be careful about the impacts of the terrain that you're deploying on. Um, it can certainly cause issues on your plan if you don't plan it right. Um, magma cannons are quite slow. That is a downside to them for sure. All right. This one, if it's in range, though, uh, it's, oh, it's just outside of range. How annoying. All right, I'm going to have to scooch forward just ever so slightly, like right here. And then I'll just move these guys up a little bit to cover them. There we go. Now that we're in range, um, once we've hit the green skins with a few shots, they'll come towards me. So we got a black orc just inside of range. Now these cannons are not going to be terribly accurate because they're brand new. But when a magma cannon does hit, it does tremendous damage. And then it leaves that little spot that causes further damage for anything that gets moved into it. So you can see that just even with that kind of glancing hit, how much damage was done to that black orc. So, we will certainly have their attention here very shortly. Their decision to stay in camp will not last long. The AI is going to move around some. Are you not on fire at will? And if so, why are you not firing? You got targets. Huh, it's weird that Ian's not firing. All right, so I'm going to just kind of continue firing until the green skins get the message here. We're going to waste a lot of ammo. Again, as these units get more kills um, and chevron up, they'll become much more accurate, and their reload will improve, and they'll stop, start to cause just tremendous devastating damage uh, to enemy formations. And we're going to target more black works as they become a little more available. I'll throw one. I've got one gun kind of targeting just here in the center where it can maximum damage if it hits something. We'll target that black work here in just a moment. So the black works are going to be our, our key target. Awesome. All right, magma cannons. Check. There we go. Got our infantry to protect them. That looks like a hit. Oh, yeah, and it hit multiple units. So this is how the magma cannons can quickly start to chevron. See them? Picking up chevrons already. Look at the damage. And we're going to target those black orcs. 
we're gonna keep targeting these black orcs over here too. So we're gonna, we wanna soften up the black orcs. So this is why the green skins should have just kind of run screaming across the map as quickly as they can. Because sitting still is never going to be in your interest whenever the enemy has artillery like a magma cannon. It's just going to allow them to fire at you longer for maximum range. So, uh, we scored a hit over here too. Yeah, so see the, the magma cannons already have a, a single chevron and they're working on their second. One of them's more than halfway to the second. So, like I said, it's not going to take these units long to level up, and then as they level up, they're just going to become more devastating. See, they're pretty good against monstrous infantry there, too. See what it did to those river trolls? So, magma cannons are really not bad at all. I'm going to save my Kadai summons for whenever combat gets joined, and their air, uh, arrows are going to be sitting back trying to fire at me. Ooh, I don't know why it's hitting their trolls. I'm targeting their black orcs, but we killed a unit on the trolls. And then we have really damaged these black works over here quite a lot as well. So we're just going to keep targeting infantry. It is certainly the most effective target for the magma cannon. One of them's got double chevron, almost two and a half. And then that other shot just landed right in the middle of some black works, leaving them crippled. Um, I'm actually going to maybe put some shots into these trolls here too. I want to damage up these black orcs some more, but there's about to be trees potentially blocking shots. I'll go ahead and keep targeting there and just see how we do. These chariots are going to have no real prayer of getting into our back lines because I've got the renders and they have plenty of mass to stop chariots. Yeah, we've got two chevrons, almost three now, going down on the magma cannons. So again, the green skins could ill afford the damage that they're going to be. Suffering here comes a Spirit Leech. That's going to be from the River Hag. I'm going to get ready to kind of body block with Astrogoth. Spirit Leech, I guess they've used it a couple of times because that feels like a little too much damage just for once. Ooh, now remember that we can get upgrades on our cannons as well. So our cannons are just going to become more damaging over time. So this is only the beginning. I'm going to get Ash Storm ready because it slows down incoming units. Look, that Wolf Rider just got deleted. Not that it's too difficult to delete a Wolf Rider, but... I think that the um, Snotling Wagons are busted again from what I've been hearing on my Discord, meaning that CA kind of undid the change that had them kind of broken for a while. Summon a Kadai back here. I just want to fix some of these green skin units here and let my blunderbuss do their, their job the way that they do it. So you can see them just pounding away. All right, one of my blunderbuss units got caught here. Let's bring in the uh, immortals to hold that. And bring our blunderbuss back. Let's bring our Tarek in here too. And let's get so our Kadai gathered a bunch of attention and killed an archer unit back here. Let's go for the other archer units. All right, we cleaned up some of the snotling wagons. Our blunderbuss unit is stuck. It just won't retreat here. Here. Actually, they weren't stuck. That was not the one I retreated, my bad. So I got some of my blunderbuss units cooked way too bad. That was a mistake on my part. Okay, let's charge over here. We've got more green skins coming. This blob, we've got a lot of power in here. Between our Iron Sworn and the other units, this black work is a little dangerous to me. It's, we're going to need some support against it, so I'm going to run my renders into that. There's some orc boys trying to intercept them, but we're going to get some support over there. And then, let's see, we got some... Slow all this stuff down. Throw some magic buffs down in here. Use our hammer. And we routed the other goblin archer units. See, it didn't take long, so already, look at this, our cannon, one of them picked up a triple chevron. So, the, uh, the cannons are very potent weapons. There we go. Alright, so we did not win the battle undamaged. So, could have done better, but we're alright. 
We got the job done. They must have... Yeah, they got an unbreakable gobble unit. There it goes. But we still got a lot of damage done. Only a modestly powerful greenskin army. They had two units of biggins, four blorks, um, a river troll hag, night gobble shaman, snotling wagons. Like, I mean, this was certainly not a nothing burger. There were several troll units. Um, and even with my mismanagement, we stomped him pretty hard. That Look at this, 100 kills on the Immortals. I mean, that's, that unit's going to be pretty powerful. Our Blunderbuss units that didn't get too caught up managed to do a ton of... Uh, look at the, uh, the raw damage there, 14,000. And just look at the Magma Cannons. These things are absolutely bananas. I'm guessing they'll get tuned down, but that was their very first battle, and both of them picked up over 2,000 value and three Chevrons. Um, so that's why I got the Magma Cannons involved. Um, I don't remember what this place was. I believe it was Raw Materials. I could be wrong, though. We definitely need some factories, too. We need both. So let's just go ahead and occupy this, start cranking out some more Raw Materials, and then we'll, um, we'll go ahead and pick up the next one as a factory or just in pump out some more from our existing factories um, as far as armaments go. So that was good that the Greenskins moved back to defend that, and we got to kill them all at once. That, I mean, it was good for me. It wasn't good for them. Our Regiment of Renown should now be available, and we're going to get Hellhammer here, which is a pretty potent spell. We're going to upgrade it twice so that we get uh, reduced cost, and then later on, I believe that, um, yeah, this discount uh, Hellhammer up here allows us to just cast the crap out of it. Um, so we'll want to get that eventually as well. And then let's go over here and take a look at the upgrades on our Taruk. He is now immortal, which we love. Or at least I love. Maybe you don't love it. Uh, maybe my enemies don't love it. I don't know. Um, let's go. Uh, the armor isn't bad, but I mean, I always like getting... And we're going to grab a heroic killing blow, which is good for like taking on enemy characters. And then let's get in here with the Regiments of Renown. This is going to eat up some more of our somewhat limited gold income at the moment now. How's our convoy coming? Okay, the convoy completed, which means we should be heavy on labor at the moment. Yep, we are in good shape on labor. Maybe not perfect here, but not bad. And we just picked up some from those battles as well. Awesome. Um, so we are in a good spot, and this army now needs to start... Oh, uh, there's only... Well, there's only two more greenskin settlements up here. One of them is Eagle Iries. I wonder if we can ask Kolek to go for Eagle Iris. We can. Okay, so if Kolek goes for Eagle Iris, I can hit Yeti Peak, and then hopefully we can wipe out Grimgore here. So I hopefully Kolek will follow our, our request, and then, I'll, like I said, I'll go for Yeti Peak. And I'd love to occupy Titan's Notch as well. Um, this would give, or Yeti Peak would give me a tower, I believe, potentially. Um, so we'll go check that out um, for a potential occupation. Uh, we finished our research, which is good. Um, we we got some extra over... What did we get? It was extra... Recruiting spots, I believe, is what we did. Yeah, we did this one. So that's going to reduce global recruitment time, and then it gave us an extra slot. Um, so that was definitely helpful. <clears throat> this one increases local recruitment capacity, and then we can get more ammunition and an extra Infernal Castellan. I definitely want one of those... Heroes. It's like an engineer hero. Um, I'm going to wait till I have a little more gold on hand to get one. I'm also kind of just not doing a bunch of my upgrades here, depending on what they are, because it requires a lot of gold. And I'm kind of trying to save a little bit of gold, but we will use our uh, some of our other resources if I can find something to use these on. We could send a caravan and sell some armaments. Um, though, like I said, typically I just kind of find the labor a little more helpful. To, it depends on the speed at which you're engaging in battles, though. Like, if you're getting into battles constantly, then at that point, um, I would probably be sending caravans to help me earn money or pull in whatever, you know, resources or raw materials that you need. Um, however, at, you know, at the rate that I'm going, um, I kind of prefer just to keep getting labor. Uh, but again, I think it depends on just how aggressive you are. Better scales or hidden stores. Let's do the hidden stores so we can replenish faster. <clears throat> I like getting these upgrades for my convoy overseers first. Um, that way they'll stay in pretty good. Oh, sweet. We picked up a soul grinder of Zinch on that run. Oh my gosh, man. This army is beautiful. I really love the convoys. It is so much fun. You get all kinds of crazy units. 
it is really quite a good time. Uh, where is the outpost it wants us to build? Oh, speaking of, we can dispatch a second convoy. Uh, let's see if there's... Th I'm a little more risky with this convoy because it's new. Um, I'm not super worried about it. Uh, the Valery is going to output raw materials for gold. Is there anybody shipping out gold? Yeah, like over here, we could trade. At, I mean, this might be a bit of a dangerous route. Um, but if we... We can get a lot of gold by sending out some armaments. Um, let's go ahead and try it. Might as well. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's a long convoy, which means that we're not going to have access to labor via convoy soon, so we need to, to continue fighting here. Um, but, you know, the worst thing that happens if we start running low on labor is we just slow our, our amount of raw materials. Like, we're going to slow it to grind. It doesn't really kill us. It just, without the raw materials, you can't make a lot of building upgrades, which I'm not making those at a super rapid pace right now. Anyway, it's not the end of the world, right? Um, we, we would be okay until we go in and kill off some more enemies and get some more labor to fuel the economy back up or, you know, waiting for another convoy. Um, I think there may be a, I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but if there's a tech that increases the number of active convoys, we should be looking for that one because that would be pretty powerful. I want to say there is medical supplies, bombardments. We probably do want to do some upgrades to our smoke shroud. Ah, oh, maybe there was one reduced rations. That did the convoy thing. Let's look over here in sorcery. I don't know why it would be here, but it might. Immune to desert attrition. So that's kind of cool to get immune to some attritions. Labor action. Tower settlement buildings gain an additional two conclave points. That could be good there, too. Minus leader. Signature spell casting. Quotas. Is it here? Labor organization. All convoys gain an additional unit when completing a route. Now that would be really good. Um, arms monopoly that increases convoy stuff. It looks like a lot of convoy stuff is here. Maximum number of active convoys plus one. We're doing that one. All right. Because that would be quite powerful. I knew it was in there somewhere. All right, there we go. Garrison Lord not moved. I'm not worried because that's not one that I need to move. And let's go ahead and just end our turn here. So again, appreciate the comments that you all brought in regarding how your um, Chaos Dwarf campaigns are going. Um, I I'd be curious if you all want to, if you're this far into the video and you're still watching and you're kind enough to leave a comment, leave your thoughts on just the state of the game in general right now. Veil of Titans. Okay, that's not far from us. So Grimgor has brought an army. Um, that'll be good, actually, because hopefully we'll get some labor from it. It stinks that he tore up one of our settlements, but it's not the end of the world over there. Um, so we need to go attack Grimgor. He's got to be running low on resources as well. He's he's not got many provinces left. Um, he's surrounded by enemies. And that was on purpose for me, by the way. Um, Naval's attrition, but reduce journey time. Keep moving as normal. Let's just keep moving normal. Um, all right, so we need to engage Grimgor. Did it say ally, attack, settlement, heralds of tempest? Ally, attack, settlement, tempest. I guess they needed to attack the challenge stone. I want them to hit Eagle Iris. I think they did. Yeah, Eagle Iris is gone. Sweet. So Grimgor lost, I believe that was his capital. So Grimgor is going to be in a world of hurt right now. And that's exactly the world we want him in. All right, so he's down here at Vale of Titans. I'm going to go ahead and move over to Blood Peak and try and get in a position to catch Grimgor's army. I really just want to, uh, you know, take him out. I'm not going to repair that because he's right there. All right, we're doing good, rebuilding that stuff. Labor's still at 100%. Here at Blood Peak, 
Honestly, it'd be good to build this building, and then I could locally pick up uh, iron demons if we need to. I mean, I could get rid of that wolf archer, stick it in the other army, and pick up an extra iron demon. And then... Yeah. And then when that other regiment of renown iron demon becomes available, we could try and work it into here as well. Maybe? I don't know which unit it would replace. This army's kind of what I want it to be here at the moment. I think I'm just going to wait and put that one in there. So that means that we don't really need that building. I don't know, though. It never hurts to be able to recruit artillery over here. Um, do we have... Yeah, we have defenses. It, it doesn't hurt to be able to recruit artillery. Let's see what these other buildings are, though. Raw material output, local province, 10%. That could be good, too. And then it goes up to 30%. Yeah, that's pretty sweet, actually. This one would give us some much-needed income at the cost of raw materials. I almost think if we build this building and then build this one in one of the other settlements that that could end up being... Well, actually, I think this one's only available in the factory settlement. I don't know. We'll just have to see. We do need gold, um, so we could cough up some raw materials in favor of some gold here. Let's do it. Should be worth it. Give it a shot. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and increase my defense here. And then let's go ahead and not worry about the damaged buildings. I'm not worried about outpost upgrades. And then another one here. Our main objective is just to engage Grimgore. It looks like um, Yeti Peak is being overrun by Grimgore's allies. That stinks, actually, because I kind of wanted that territory. They took Titan's Notch and Yeti Peak. That takes potential towers away from me. However, the good thing is, is if they just help me tame this land over here, I don't have any other enemies over here, we'll get rid of Grimgore, that's one of our objectives, and then I can just move to the southwest, um, or to the west in general, and go after, I think we have to kill Kara Zakarak, and we also need to take out um, uh, Kara Kadrin. And if we take out those two factions, we're well on our way to long victory, as long as we then get the uh, required number of settlements, which we're a long ways from, but... Again, doesn't hurt to be playing the objective, right? Um, so we're gonna we're gonna play the objective and do our best there. Grimcore's army is still hanging out here. There's a good chance that they try and just take over Vale of Titans. Grimgore lost his settlement down here. He's about to lose this one, and then we're about to get his final army. Um, so that should be the end of Grimgore. And I'm kind of thinking at that point, I believe that we are at war with the Skaven up here. Let's take a look at our diplomacy. Yeah, we're at war with Clan Ferrex, so I think what I'm going to do is go up here and help out the Gormandy tribe. There's some territory up here that wouldn't be bad to gain and is, you know, not being contested at the moment. Um, so we could go snag that and then go to war with the dwarves. Um, gosh, man, they got some good stuff here. That gold mine would be fantastic. There's Skaven down here that need to be gone as well. I mean, we've got, we've got plenty of targets to potentially take out. I guess we could just hold back Clan Ferrex. We kind of got a choke point against them as it is. Though they can go underground, so you never know. Um, Garrison Lord. Again, I know we haven't moved him. That's not my objective to move him. It, actually, I am going to move him. That's where our Gabo building is. Is it here too? Yeah. Let's move over there to where we have a Gabo recruitment building. That way, if we need to pick up some units quick, we can. All right. But anyway, this should bring an end to the war with Grimgore. And I feel like that would be a good objective to meet in this episode, is be able to say we knocked out one of our victory conditions here. Relatively early on. And like I say, if you let Grimgore snowball, he can be quite a challenge later on. Um, in in the, the campaign that I kind of played on my own, uh, before I was able to show this to you all, um, Grimgore had become immensely powerful. He'd taken over basically all of the mountains over here. He, he had probably 20 settlements by the time I attacked him. He was very powerful. Uh, these guys want a military alliance. I'm going to accept that. Alright, fight the battle. Keep moving forward. Avoid the battle. Increase the journey time. Um, I don't want to increase the journey time... I don't have great units at stopping the Saber Tusk. I do have two Blunderbust units that we can shred their monstrous infantry with, though. Let's show them their place. Take a, take a risk here. Let's go ahead and fight this one. 
Wow, this battlefield is incredibly dark. Um, but yeah, welcome to it. <laughs> it's just a very dark battlefield. Uh, bound spells, very nice. Withering and Enfeebling Foe. We'll throw the Enfeebling Foe on a little section here. Their Lord is approaching these. And then over here, we've got their Ogre Bulls approaching the other Blunderbuss units, so that's good. We'll use our, our uh, leader to body block that. I'm going to go after the Saber Tusk Packs with my Flyers, uh, just to prevent them getting on my flanks. We can summon a unit of Kadai as well. I'm going to wait on that summon, and we'll grab the right spot. As soon as these guys hit range. Okay, dive bomb, dive bomb. Shoot them in the face, shoot him in the face. And then let's summon a Kadai. Okay, yeah, we already melted one unit of ogres. We're gonna keep our warriors out of the way here and just allow us to continue to shoot their leader. Yeah, we thrashed that unit of monstrous infantry. That was beautiful. Just absolutely ripped through them. I'm gonna move this unit up. Um, oh! Our Lama Su here, or whatever it's called, got completely owned by Saber Tusk. That's not ideal. Let's take their lord out of this fight. As long as it doesn't die, we'll be out. Oh, he got melted by that volley. He's down to 44 hit points. That was beautiful. Alright, so it wasn't a lossless battle because we took a lot of damage on the Lamasu here. I should have used this earlier. I just didn't get to it because the battle took place pretty quickly, but otherwise we did wreck pretty hard. Well, this convoy still got a long journey and it's pretty weak. I could do the replan. I think I'm going to because nothing else here is particularly valuable and uh, we want to minimize the weakness of that army. Um, so let's see here. I think we've had a good episode. I would like to end this episode with basically the destruction of Grimgor. And we can catch him here. There's plague, unfortunately, which means we're likely to pick up some plague. I don't know if it's Skaven plague or if it's other plague, but yeah, we've got Grimgor here. What does this battle look like? If it's open field, then yeah, it's, it's overestimating his chances. Let's put him in his place. Alright. I've got the battle ready to start. I'm going to initially target the enemy Doom Diver catapult because um, it provides them range, and I've kept my army out of range of their Doom Diver um, while allowing my magma cannons to open fire. Um, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to stomp their their Doom Diver. The enemy's going to reposition and try and get set up with their reinforcements. It's understandable. Oh, the Doom Diver took a nasty hit right off the bat. Oh, I forgot about their uh, Rogue Idol. Ooh, boy, he slapped me. That was a direct hit. I'm actually kind of concerned about that. Let's get a couple more magma launches, and then I might just start targeting him. Ah, we missed. That sucks. I'm going to summon my Kadai on top of that unit, actually. I can't, uh, I can't afford to let this rogue idol just go ham on us here. The Crimson Killers are present. This may be a little too soon, but I think it should allow me to just get rid of the Doom Diver. And then my magma cannons, I I don't know how well we're going to hit that big target. I think we'll hit them just fine. Come on, finish their Doom Divers before Grimgore kills you. You can do it. All right, here comes the shots. Let's see. He's a big, slow target, so I'm hoping we can hit him. We did hit him. It did not do very great damage, but it did damage all the infantry underneath him quite well. And we did get rid of the Doom Divers. I'm going to just go ham on however many archers we can catch and see if we get any more damage done this time. Two more direct hits, yeah, they're just, they're not doing a ton of damage to him. So let's just start targeting uh, archer units or crimson killers. Crimson killers are about to head through the forest, so I'm gonna wait just a minute on them. Okay, I do have my army in a pretty solid position over here. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna just go ahead and I don't want to move my army forward. I'm just going to pull my magma cannons back. They're very slow. It's going to take them a minute to, to get back in position. I feel like um, if I take my extra centaurs and the wolves over here, we can easily shut down this flank. 
in early combat. Let's go ahead and go do that. Alright, let's shut down these guys. Alright, the magma cannons are going to make it back to safety. And then my renders are getting involved over here. There is the one unit here, the uh, Broken Tusk mob, that is going to be pretty potent. They're a, they're a pretty good unit. But we're going to overpower them. Alright, everything into the Broken Tusk mob. Alright, the Teeth Robbers are shooting my cannons, but they are now up in range, and the uh, Death Creepers. But they're now up in range of the blunderbuss units, so they're going to pay a, a pretty stiff price for their foolishness. Yep, so they'll do a little bit of damage to my cannon, but nothing significant. Um, I'm going to actually position the cannons right there, because it should be clean shots. Right, we took out their chariots. We've got an impound group of enemies here. Somehow, the broken tusk mob is still alive. I don't fully understand that. Let's go Black Orc boss against uh, Centaur Taruk. Heroic Killing Blow. Okay, the Broken Tusk mob still alive somehow. It keeps managing to cycle charge. I think my guys are getting stuck on the wolves or the squigs or something. And our Taruk... Not doing as great as I hoped against the Black Orc boss. Let's fall back here a little bit. Let's melt that Gobbo Archer. Man, that Black Orc big boss is hitting hard. Our Lord got caught out out there, but he should be okay. Um... Can we melt that archer unit? And we can melt that too. We need to fall back here because Grimgore is coming in hot and heavy. Oh, our Tarek's getting a little bit roasted there. Uh, the Crimson Killers came after us over here, which is actually not the best of moves by them. Kill the stinking broken Tusk mob. Like, I just cannot seem to get rid of those guys. Um. All right, let's pull back these blunderbusses. Cannons, please silence the archers for me. Oh my gosh. Grimgore is just going absolutely bananas on my units over there. And let's see, what do we got? Little buffs here, what's the range on this? Let's throw that out here. Line them up. There we go, got some good damage done, and how's this flank? So, trying to clean up all this stuff so I can focus on the Crimson Killers, which we should be able to handle. Um, in fact, this unit right here of Ravagers has armor-piercing anti-infantry capabilities. These last few units just won't route, though, for some reason. I don't really know how they're hanging on out there, but we'll get rid of them here momentarily. Um, we're still getting pummeled by archers. And we've got a pretty significant fight going on right here. Our Taruk is getting a little bit roasted. Let's pull him away. We've still got to deal with Grimgor, so I'm going to target my blunderbuss units on him. Actually, the, these two blunderbuss units need to just get away from combat. They're kind of getting wrecked here a little. Um, cannons, let's go after these archers. Bring our lord back over. Okay, we this fight did not get started the way I want it to. Somehow there is still a squig herd unit alive over here, which is really quite unbelievable. I'm going to try and let my bull tank the Crimson Killers for just a second. Throw some axes in here. And then once we cycle in all these renders against the Crimson Killers at once, we should be able to drop them. They are really pooping on our bull right now. They are a very potent unit. But they're about to get hit with some potent anti-infantry and anti-armor units completely surrounded. Alright, how are we doing? Alright, Grimgor is getting pulled apart slowly but surely. And then um, I've got extra renders over here that I didn't use. 
Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to enter melee with Grimgore. Let's get our wolves. Oh, the rogue idol. I forgot about the rogue idol. Uh, can you all shotgun him, please? Because he's not gonna route. By the way, a um, little bit of a messy battle, but it was a fun one. Yeah, Crimson Killers, that's, I figured they would get overpowered by all that anti-infantry capability, and they certainly did. Certainly did. Alright, Grimgore's down. We now just have to shotgun the Rogue Idol to that. Oh my gosh, man, that Rogue Idol just took a big step all over us. There we go. Dang, man. Big tough unit. The value, I'm curious, uh, our renders that were fighting out on that flank. How'd they do against the Crimson Killers? They did decent. They did decent. Our, uh, the Immortals continue to just get tremendous numbers of kills. Tarek did good, but that was a tough fight against those. And then uh, Astrogoth did good as well. Our cannons just continue to deliver tremendous beatdown. Um, so they're good. Anyway, yeah, looking looking pretty solid. All right, so we got a Pyrrhic victory. Ugly victory, but it was a victory. Um, factory. I feel like if we have the one factory, I want to make these other ones into the outpost. And we're going to end up with a plague here, probably. Okay, all right. Well, our army is replenishing Grimgore... It's got to be very near death. I don't know if he even has any territory left. He does. He's just got Yeti Peak, and it was under siege, but it looks like they gave up on it. Interesting. Or I just don't have a line of sight to it anymore. So, that is good news. Um, so, Grimgore pretty much dealt with here. So, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. I hope you all enjoyed it. And we are going to continue our Chaos Dwarf adventure next time. So I will see you soon. Ooh, we've got furs. Let's get the furs. And then I might go ahead and spend the money to upgrade this so that I can build defenses there as well. So, like I said, see you all in the next episode. Heir of Carthage, signing out.